is part of of what you're doing and 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 participating in in all that the Lord is doing. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to uh, turn it over to um, uh, brother. Brother Fred. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to brother Fred. As Sherry mentioned uh, a few moments ago, we're going to start a new series tonight. We're really excited about it. Uh, we're, Jamie used the word uh, supercharged, and, and I believe that we mm -hmm. are supercharged. Amen. Uh, we're talking about the awakening. We are on the edge of the greatest awakening, awakening that man has ever seen. Amen. And the title of it, of the uh, series, is advancing the awakening it's not just information but what we're going to do here is to advance the awakening and and i want to uh, just give you a little bit of background as an overview of the awakening before i actually get into the, the message tonight the message tonight is about carrying revival fires uh, but I want to talk about the awakening because this is the series that we're going to be dealing with, uh, the awakening. And, and I want to say there's two terms that are closely related, um, and one is revival, and the other is awakening. Now, revival comes from God. It's a pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And just like uh, John 15, uh, 26 says, there is uh, issuing from the presence of God, the mm -hmm. Spirit of truth, and he's confirming the things of, about Jesus Christ. And I like what the message says. It says, and on the other side, we are confirming uh, the experiences that we're having. So both God and his people have a responsibility in the revival. It's issuing out of uh, the throne of God, the presence of God, and then the Holy Spirit is going to confirm the things about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we, as the people of God, from our side, we are going to be confirming uh, what we're seeing and hearing and experiencing. So that's our responsibility. The, the difference between these two terms, revival and awakening, is that the revival starts and the source of it is from God. But the awakening is for us to be sensitive to the movement of the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. So the awakening then has to come uh, from our side that we are becoming awake. And, and I've already mentioned uh, uh, John 15, 26, and I want to talk about the awakening. Uh, uh, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse uh, because it's very important. It's saying, don't get caught up in day-to-day -day activities and obligations. Yes, so, amen, amen. Be awake to what God is doing. So let's hear this verse, Sherry. John 15, 26 from the message. When the friend I plan to send you from the Father comes, the spirit of truth issuing from the Father, he will confirm everything about me. You, too, from your side, must give your confirming evidence. So we have a part in the awakening. Okay, now read the next verse, which is about the awakening. That was Romans, Romans 13, 11 and 12. But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all of your day-by-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. The dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to do what God is doing. There, Woo. There, I, let me read that again. Be up and a, awake to what God is doing. So the awakening Hallelujah. is our being sensitive to what the Lord is doing. That's the awakening. And of course, there have been many awakenings over time. And I like to talk a little bit about uh, the awakening here in uh, America uh, and, and a person that uh, was very instrumental in starting the, the awakening uh, from 1720s. And he was ministering in the 1720s and his name was Freddie. 
And I like to I like to say that I was named after Freddie Tyson, uh, who, who was the person who started uh, the first fires of an awakening. Uh, he, yeah. he, what he did was called the precursor to the Great Awakening. And of course, then in the Great Awakening, you had people like uh, George, and they call him Whitmore, but I like to call him Whitemore because yeah, there is an E in his name. Uh, started right here in Georgia, and so there was this great awakening. Now, the the implications about the great awakening was that things began to change, and in that great awakening, uh, there was this uh, assurance that we have personal relationship with the Lord, and that great awakening was necessary before we get to 1776 for the uh, revolution. See, if we had had the same mindset uh, in 1770s as we had in previous decades uh, that, uh, well, we've got a king and we've got the priest and the priest to stand between us and God, and, uh, but there is a personal relationship. And that's where the great awakening, uh, what it brought forth, that, that we have a personal relationship with the Lord. And out of that, uh, the the people, the fathers of the revolution said, well, okay, we, we need to be um, making decisions and we don't just need to depend on other people to know what was best for us and make decisions what's best for us. And, and, and we're going to have, uh, and so they had a fire within them. There was an awakening and, and it really led to uh, the uh, revol revolution and, and uh the new nation being birthed out of the great awakening. And that's really exciting because I want you to know that when there is a revival, uh, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, and then we awake to that, then things are going to change. And if there had not been a uh, great awakening, there may never have been uh, the United States of America. We may have just been colonies of England. But once you have the awakening, then things change. Mm, hallelujah. And, and that's, I want to go on then and, and start about the fire, uh, because it's really about the fire coming forth, and you are carriers of the fire of God. And that, of course, is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're carriers of the revival fires i mean when the fires come jesus made this really important statement uh that when the fires come things are going to change everything changes so when we have a great awakening everything changes that's when we had uh the new nation uh birthed uh, on these shores because there was a great awakening because everything changes. And, and I'm proclaiming here today, and Sherry and I are in agreement on this, that we are on the cutting edge of mm -hmm. the greatest awakening that man has ever seen. I mean, and you might say, well, I haven't seen it in the news. You, uh, and you may not see it on the evening news. Mm -hmm. You may not see it on the morning news. Mm -hmm. You may not see it on the internet. You may not see it uh, in your newspaper. Your neighbors may not be talking about it. Uh, where do you see the awakening going on? You see the awakening in the scriptures. And that's the oh, truth. Oh, hallelujah. That's hallelujah. The truth. That's the truth. Mm. <laughs> hallelujah. What you see in the scriptures and what's brought alive to you by the Holy Spirit and the awakening has come alive in our spirit. The awakening has come alive. And what is going to bring it forth is the prophetic voice. Amen. And we are a company of, uh, of apostles and prophets, prophets here in together. And it's our voice that's going to be advancing the uh, mm. greatest awakening Hallelujah. of all time. Hallelujah. And, and um, many people have been proclaiming a billion souls being laid, Amen. being raised, raised. And saved Amen. in this great awakening. And so now I'm going to, that's an overview of what we're going to be covering over the next few weeks. 
And now I'm, I'm really talking about the fire and the fire of God. And I want you to remember that God himself is a consuming fire. Yes. He is the consuming fire. And that is, of course, in Hebrews 12, 29. But his word is also a hammer, hammer and, and a fire. fire. Amen. So his word is a fire. And so what I want you to see in these next few moments is that you are carriers of the fire. So if God is a fire and Jesus came to baptize you and immerse you mm -hmm. in fire, that's mm -hmm. Matthew uh, I'm 3 11. So he's come to baptize you, immerse you in the fire. Amen. And if you carry God, you carry fire in you. And uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7 says, and I just want to ask this question first. I want to see a show of hands of people who consider themselves to be servants of God. Are you a servant mm -hmm. of God? Mm -hmm. Well, we know from Hebrews 1 7 that the servants of God are flames, flames of fire. fire. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I wonder if I ask you how many are flames of fire, would you also raise, raise your hand? Because that's what it says. Uh, the, his servants <laughs> are flames of fire, and you're, you are a servant of God. Yes, you are I mean. A flame of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want uh, Sherry to read this verse in uh, uh, about Jesus, a, a statement. And this is really the mission statement for Jesus. Mm, I hallelujah. want you to think about it. This is the mission statement for Jesus. What? Why did he come? You know, we can all uh, debate and say, well, he came for this reason. He came for that reason. But these are his words. Let's let let Sherry read this mm, verse. Okay. Luke 12, 49, again from the message. I've come to start a fire on this earth. Hallelujah. That's his mission. Hallelujah. He came to set the earth, earth on, on fire. fire. How I wish it were blazing right now. I've come to change everything. Oh, I've got to stop you right there. Oh, glory. Change everything. everything when the fire comes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Everything is going to be changed and everything is going to be set in order. When oh, the amen. Fire comes. amen. As the fire comes. I've okay. come to change everything, turn everything right side up. How I long for it to be finished. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. He, that's the mission statement. That's his mission statement. And we're to be imitators of Jesus Christ. He came to set fire on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. To set the earth hallelujah. On fire. Hallelujah. Do you Everywhere believe, you go, you, you carry the fire. Do, hallelujah. Do you believe he set the earth on fire? I believe he did. He said, Amen. You, you know, there, he was walking with a couple of men one day uh, on the road to Emmaus. Uh, and and uh, this is uh, Luke uh, 24, uh, verse 32. Mm -hmm. And he opened the scriptures to them and, and began to uh, show them and reveal the scriptures to them. And you know what they said? Did not our hearts burn, burn within, within us? us? Okay. So that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be opening the scriptures to people. Show the people scriptures. And, and then that will cause their hearts to be on fire and, and bring passion to them about Jesus Christ and about the kingdom of God, and that's a fire. Amen. And, and so we carry the fire, and so we ought to leave a trail of fire behind us. Mm. Jesus came. <laughs> his, his, <laughs> that, that's, in, that's in Joel. Hallelujah. His mission. Hallelujah. His mission was set the earth on, on fire. fire, and we are to imitate him, and we are to set the earth on fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Our his word is fire. And if you carry his word in you, you have fire within you. You know, uh, I believe as Jeremiah said, uh, there's fire. Fire in my bones. Shut up in my bones. I, I, I've got to let it out. Mm -hmm. If you realize you've got fire within you, you're going to have to let it out. You're going to have to mm -hmm. touch the people that, that you come in contact with. You, you've got to spread the fire. This 
This message today, Carrying Revival Fires, is about spreading the fire of Jesus Christ. Now, we know from what uh, John the Baptist said in Matthew 3.11, and I'll ask Sherry to read it, but, but he's going to baptize us when Jesus comes. And has he come and has he baptized you and immersed you in the Holy Spirit and fire? Go ahead and read this. This is okay, this the is, words uh, of John the Baptist. From the New American Standard. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Have you been baptized? Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire? Oh, glory to yeah, God. And I think about the three Hebrew children who went into the fiery furnace. What do you think was happening in that furnace? Hallelujah. As the fourth man began to walk in that, that fire with them, they were immersed. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. And they came out with more power. They came out with strength. Uh, they came out unburned. Uh, in the name of Jesus, and that's you, every one of you, if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, praise God, let's begin to use it, Hallelujah. thank you Lord, you, hallelujah, you will walk through the fire, and you will, will not, not be, be burned. burned, amen, hallelujah, now there's an interesting um, passage in Leviticus, and, and we see it from God, uh, and then starts in Leviticus 6, and he's warning us about the fire. And, and he's saying uh, in Leviticus 6, 13, he said, keep the fire on the altar burning. burning. Now, he didn't just say keep. He said, you must. Oh, hallelujah. Do you see that word must? You must keep the, wor the fire burning on the altar continuously. And you must, okay, here's the second must mm -hmm. in that one verse. The second must is, and you must not let the fire go, go out. out. Amen. Hallelujah. Two must. You must keep it burning continuously, and you must not let it go out. Now, so he's preparing the people for something that's going to happen in Leviticus 9. Uh, glory to God. And what? I have an example here. Okay. I have a, okay. In 1 Samuel, uh, when Samuel was, was, was with Eli, it said, ere the lamp of the Lord went out. It was almost going out. And so what did God do? As the fire was, was getting lower and lower and lower, what did God do? He sent a prophet. He sent the prophetic voice. And that prophetic voice brings, oh, the it brings the fire of God and it starts the flame going again. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Hallelujah. Okay, so in the ninth chapter of Leviticus, there's a fire that the sacrifice is placed on the altar, and there's a fire that comes out from the presence. Oh, listen to this from the presence of God, and it burns up. It burns up the offering and the and the portion portion of fat there with it, and so it just burned everything up. But remember, it's the priests who keep the fire going. So it's God that lights the fire and the priests that keep it going. But you are a kingdom of priests. Priest, amen. So we're all priests. And what is our sacrifice? Well, Romans twelve, mm -hmm. uh, verse one said this is reasonable for you to put your body mm -hmm. all your body as a living, living and holy sacrifice on the altar of god oh hallelujah only then will you know his will only then will you know it and so we've got to put our bodies as a living and holy sacrifice on the altar of god and it has to be burnt he does not accept an offering that's not burnt. We have to keep it burning. Mm -hmm. well, whose responsibility Hallelujah. is it to keep it burning? The fire is lit by the presence of God. And so we've got to remember 
It's the presence of God. We do not want that fire to go out. And just like uh, in the time of Samuel, uh, there needed to be a prophet there to keep that mm -hmm. fire mm -hmm. burning. Amen. And so this prophetic words that we're hearing, uh, it's bringing forth that fire and stirring it up. And so our God is a consuming fire. The word, his word is a fire. Mm -hmm. And so if we have the word of God in us, we have a fire within us. If we're a servant of God, we are a flame of fire. I mean, and then I like what 2 Timothy uh, 1 verse 6 says, and I'll ask Sherry to read that. This is instruction uh, from Paul to Timothy, but it applies to all of us. Was it so in the Passion Translation? I'm writing to encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. Oh, hallelujah. Rekindle the fire. So we've got to rekindle the fire in our lives. Who is responsible for that? Each person is responsible. You are a kingdom of priests. You're the priest. You're the priest. Mm -hmm. And not only are you the priest, you're the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You keep your body a living it's and a holy, holy sacrifice, sacrifice on the altar of God, and you keep the fire burning. The fire, obviously, the source of it is God. And Jesus has baptized us with the Holy Spirit and fire and immersed us in fire. Amen. And so if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, tonight is your night. Hallelujah. This is the time. Hallelujah. And, and you need it with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and that'll keep that fire stirred up. You know, Paul said, stir it up, rekindle the fire. Amen. Glory to God. We're the wrong, they're, we're the ones responsible for keeping the fire burning. And we've got to keep the our bodies a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that he said that's just reasonable service on our part. <laughs> and it's going to radically change our thinking when we know that we are on the altar and there's a fire burning and we are immersed in it. So we're going to be able to fulfill the mission that Jesus came to accomplish. And what was the mission? To set the earth, the earth on, on fire. fire. And we have the same mission to set the, the earth on fire. Wherever you, you go. Wherever you go. Carry revival fires. What are we... What are we about here? Let's bring forth the fire. Don't get so involved, absorbed, and exhausted by day-to-day -day obligations. That's what the scripture said. Don't do it because you that'll cause you to become dull to the things of God. And he closes that scripture by saying, wake up. Hallelujah. Ooh, we are to awake unto righteousness. righteousness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Awake unto righteousness. We carry revival fires. We're going to see uh, the enlightenment and the awareness and the awakening come. Amen. Uh, and it's going to spread throughout uh, the earth because Jesus came to set the earth on fire. And we are a part of that. And I want to participate in it. And I want to proclaim that the greatest awakening of all time is happening now. Hallelujah. Don't look for it on the TV. They'll miss it. Oh, yes. It, you have to have the Holy <laughs> Spirit to show you that the awakening is already taking place. Amen. Amen. And, and just like the great awakening uh, of the 19 of the 1740s and 1750s it it started with one man freddie in the <laughs> in the 1720s as a precursor to get it all going oh, amen and it amen. happened right there in uh, new jersey and when the others came behind him it was all right the fire was already beginning to burn and they began to plant uh, fan the flames and the fire began to spread all up and down 
of the East Coast and through all of the colonies, through all of the colonies. And as a result of that, there was a change, a change in everything. Amen. Change in culture. Amen. A change in the government. Hallelujah. Everything changed. And that's it. And that's what Jesus said. When I set the earth on, on fire, fire, everything is going to change, change and everything is going to be set right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to Hallelujah. thank you for being here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited about what the Lord has ahead for us. And I believe it's only beginning. Uh, and, and we can expect uh, great and mighty things from our God because he's a great and mighty God. And I'm going yeah. to turn it over to Sherry. There was a, a several years uh, ago, we heard a, a prophet of God uh, say that the, the, the next great awakening uh, is going to involve uh, the children. It's going to, he's, he's raising up the children. And in, in this group right here, we've got people who, who love the children, who work with the children, Paul and Pat have Christian schools. They're working with them every single day. And we expanding. have and expanding. And we have Miss Judy who is working with the children. We have other people that are, are just uh, being a part of, of what God is doing. And I'm telling you that raising up your, your children, your grandchildren uh, in the way of the Lord is that you are making a difference there. We have Haley. Who is a who works in the in a secular school, uh, but she carries the fire. You carry the fire, Haley, uh, in the name of Jesus. Every time you go into that classroom, every time you touch a child, every time you touch a chair, Hallelujah! What I want you to do is beginning before the students get into your classroom. I want you to, and you may already be doing this, but I want you to go and touch every chair. Uh, that that's in that classroom and declare that the fire of, of God is going to go into those children uh, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. And so we all have a part, uh, a portion uh, to, to contribute uh, in, in this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and every part is important. Uh, you don't have to have a pulpit. You don't have to have, you know, your own Bible study going on. You don't have to, uh, let me tell you something. What, what you do for the Lord uh, is important and it's eternal and God sees it and, and God is watching over his word to perform it. And so when you speak out the word of God, he's quick uh, to bring that word to pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Will you all put your hand toward Ruth right now? Uh, there's um, just lots of situations going on uh, in her life that she needs uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, to bring uh, the things that that need to fall into place, that come into place, uh, come into order in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for Ruth. We thank you for what she uh, means to your kingdom and what she means to this leadership group. And Lord, we join with her in agreement right now that all things are coming into order. All things are being fixed right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for miracles in her body. We thank you for miracles with the housing. We thank you for miracles in, in her mother's body. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory for the fire of God penetrating Ruth in everything that she's doing. Even her words that come out of her mouth her tongue will be on fire in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise. Yes, Rebecca. With that too, for Ruth. Um, yes. And my daughter, I would say unto you that, that in this situation that is going on right now, your hands are not tied. Yes. 
because oh, yeah. I am holding your hand. I am in your hand and there is fire in your hands. Amen. And my hands in this situation Amen. are not tied. And when the Hebrews were thrown in a fiery furnace and their hands and their feet were bound, the fire of God burned off the ropes and they were walking around in that place. And you're gonna, you're gonna, your hands are free. Hallelujah. Indeed. Indeed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I agree with that. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. We're going to see salvations. We're going to see people uh, walk out of wheelchairs. We're going to see uh, the miracles that that the Lord uh, is manifesting in his in his people. Hallelujah. And if you want to be part of that, you know, just raise your hand. Let's just raise our hand right now and say, uh, I want to be part of what you're doing, Lord. Yes, I want to be part of what you're doing. Yeah, just speak it out. I want to be part of what you're doing, what you're doing Lord. 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 Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, we, we give the Lord praise. Uh, I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna open up the floor uh for uh comments about uh about the awakening, uh about what what Jesus uh is doing, hallelujah, what you see him doing. I, I, I put a demand on the prophetic tonight uh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We want to hear what, what God is saying. Uh, there are some prophets that are saying that the, the revival, uh, the great awakening is going to start in Florida. And it's going to go, it's going to come up into the north. Hallelujah. Uh, there's others that say it's going to happen over on the, on the west coast uh, in California. San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, uh, San Diego, uh, those areas. Uh, and so uh, fire has already begun uh, in the name of Jesus. It's already begun. And I know that Texas is a hot spot. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When the Lord says to me, I have work for you to do in Texas, then I know that, that wherever I go, mm -hmm. that there's a fire. Uh, that that's there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the Lord would say, climb the mountain. Do not stay at the bottom and look up and say, oh, I wish I was there. But the Lord says, I'm calling you up. I'm calling you up hither that I might show you things to come, that you might speak them into existence, saith the Lord. I say unto my prophets this night, I say unto you, be free, be free, and speak the word. Yes. In Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Does someone else have a, a prophetic word? Does someone else have, have something that they, uh, a comment about this awakening? I need to say something quickly, please. Okay, Wayne. Oh, uh, I think it's Matthew 6, 33. To seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Amen. Uh, in this time specifically, we need to keep our focus first on Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. Amen. Don't get discouraged and don't get distracted by the things you see around you uh and I, I know in my lifetime i've seen moves of god come and moves of god go because men stopped them amen we can't let this one die That's hallelujah right. hallelujah it's it is imperative that we stay on our face before god and keep this one alive, it's going to mean whether or not we've got a righteous nation or an evil nation. What's going to happen in the next few months, we have got to keep the revival fires burning and keep this thing going. Amen. I agree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Someone else? Has the Lord showed you something? Has the Lord spoken to you about something uh, concerning what he's doing? I have some. Okay, uh, Jamie. 
So back, I think it was in 2019, God spoke and said that I'm releasing the clarion call. Then in 2020, he said that, uh, the, uh, the clarion call and the plumb line were coming and merging together. Anybody knows anything about construction, the plumb line has to be, the foundation has to be laid correctly in order to move forward on that. Because if the plumb line is not uh, right and the foundation is not right, then it can't bring forth, and forth uh, the revival and the awakening that we're starting to see now. So those things had to come in in, in order. And now what I'm hearing God speak uh, and, uh, and even uh, what, uh, Wayne and Bernice were talking about it as well, is there's a synchronization that's coming for So those three things have to come in uh, order and in uh, gather because see, it's, it, it's one thing to be unified, but when you become synchronized, then you're, you're you know, it, it brings perspective into a whole nother light and a whole nother shed. When you synchronize into that, then you're seeing things in a whole nother light. So Amen. when you become in sync with God, not just in unity, because see, we can all be unified and uni and come into unity on something. But when you're in sync, that means you're in the same motion moving forward. That's you're good. Going, that's you, that's you've good. Got a common, Hallelujah. You, not only do you have a common goal, but you're in sync. You're stepping when he steps and you Amen. don't move until he moves. Hallelujah. So, so it's different than unity. Unity just means that we are in agreement on something. But when you're in sync, you're moving together. Amen. you're coming Amen. into that realization and seeing that's what the great awakening is is he's sinking everything up the foundation's already been laid he done all that back in you know when when all this, this outbreak started taking place he redone the foundations and started waking them people up and now he's bringing everything into the synchronization so that we can bring forth this uh, great revival Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I believe that this group is part of what God is doing. Amen. And I believe that that each one of you, uh, it is it's just exciting uh, to to see uh, the the beauty of the Lord. The beauty of the Lord is being manifested uh, to uh, His people. Uh, and, you know, that's what revival is all about. It's not about uh, having uh, a lot of people uh, accept the Lord. Uh, revival means that it is you're reviving something. If mm -hmm. something has to be there. And that's the people of God. Hallelujah. He's reviving our hearts. He's reviving our, our actions. He's reviving us and, and, and getting us stirred up so that, that we'll go forth and spread the fire so that we'll go forth and speak the word that we're not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, this, this message makes me want to go to the streets. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. a street person. Mm 